research in my group is focused on developing bioanalytical methods that advance diagnostic capabilities. For example, one of the projects in our group uses electric fields to select cancerous cells from, from healthy cells, and these are cells that have escaped from a solid tumor into the bloodstream. So this is a, a, a way that a physician can do a, a, a liquid biopsy on a patient um, and determine certain properties about that patient's uh, disease that could inform therapeutic decisions. Another project in our group uses electric fields once again uh, to enrich biomolecules prior to interfacing those biomolecules with a sensor. And so the purpose of those methods is to increase the sensitivity that we have for um, diagnostic targets that are important. For example, uh, one of the projects that we're looking at right, that we're working on right now um, is targeted at enrichment of viral uh, nucleic acids for more sensitive detection without having to resort to PCR. One of the primary advantages of the technique that we've developed to analyze uh, circulating tumor cells is that we're able to isolate those tumor cells individually. And the reason that's important is uh, in cancer, all of the cells are different from one another, or, or in, an, in other words, we say that they're heterogeneous. And so that means that there might be a few cells that are very important to determining uh, what therapeutic steps to take. For example, some cells might be resistant to a treatment. And so our method allows us to determine if those cells are present. So there are uh, different kinds of scientific research. Some research is uh, focused on building our knowledge um, in fundamental areas of science. And then uh, there are kinds of research that are focused on solving uh, real world problems and are very applied. And what my group tries to do is, is stretch ourselves between those two extremes so that we're uh, developing uh, fundamentally new methods and um, developing new understanding and then applying that to challenging problems or vice versa. We might be targeting a new problem and we have to develop something that's fundamentally new and innovative to be able to address it. Working in my group, students have very broad exposure to a wide range of techniques. Um, of course, they learn basic analytical chemistry skills, but because of the nature of our projects, students learn how to design and fabricate microfluidic devices, um, as well as how to image those devices using uh, diverse microscopy techniques such as fluorescence microscopy. Uh, some of our students work with clinical samples or culture their own uh, cells. And then um, a lot of the students also learn separation techniques based on electric fields. So similar, to, similar concepts to those you would find in capillary electrophoresis. In addition to these laboratory skills, uh, some of the students in the group learn how to use simulation software and others write their own MATLAB code, for example, to analyze data. expectation of graduate students is that they're fully invested in the process. Um, in terms of um, hours the students work, I do provide a lot of flexibility um, with the understanding that what I'm looking at is that they're making progress and, and that I'm a partner in making sure that they're able to stay on course. Um, I, I also want my students to be able to communicate with me and to communicate frequently uh, because that allows me to uh, understand what challenges they're working on currently and help to uh, guide them or provide resources that they need. As an advisor, I try to adapt to what a student needs, and my goal is to take a student from being in that undergraduate mindset where you learn and then you have to repeat what you've learned, uh, to being someone who's exploring totally new problems where the answer is unknown, and eventually reaching independence where you can identify important problems as well as design a way to um, answer those questions and find a solution. Our, 
my group collaborates a lot. Uh, we have collaborations ongoing in chemistry. Uh, for example, um, we are, we're collaborating currently with the Anderson Group and uh, Professor Anderson and I co-advise a student. I also collaborate with a professor in mechanical engineering who does computational fluid dynamics that help us to interpret some of the um, phenomenon that we observe in the bioanalytical methods that we develop in microfluidics. Outside of Iowa State, we have a collaboration with the Carver College of Medicine at the University of Iowa. Uh, there's a professor there who is able to provide us with clinical samples and also to help uh, to guide us towards some of the most uh, cutting edge and current questions in melanoma treatment. The best part about being at Iowa State is I feel like it's a positive community in which to do one of the hardest things that you'll do in your life, which is earning a PhD. I found my colleagues to be very supportive and um, I also think that the, the students from different groups uh, connect with one, an one another and I think that that kind of community is something that provides support um, as we pursue um, challenging problems.